Today I'm going to be showing you the animation and rigging toolkit that is now available to subscribers of the Unreal Engine 4. To get started, I'm going to create a character. Um, the first step of creating characters, of course, determining what its skeleton hierarchy is going to be. So here um, I've uh, set up some of its uh, joint presets, and here I'm adding a custom joint chain for a ponytail. After we've created our skeleton, we jump right into the skeleton placement. As you can see, there are no actual joints yet, but instead we have this mesh. I refer to this as the mannequin. Uh, I built this so that basically you can go ahead and um, get something for the animators without having to have final art. So we get a concept, we can mock up a mesh like this, and then uh, we can get it to the animators. We then can hand off the mesh to the modelers. They can build the model to that and then we just switch out the mesh with the final one when we're done. So the joint mover, which you're looking at here, is a rig for placing your skeleton quickly. So it has a bunch of features like you just saw. Uh, there's aiming, uh, there's symmetry, real time. Um, there's also a physique mode. Now physique is just for aesthetics. This is only if you are in that situation I described of you don't have final art and you want to mock up something or if you, even if you're just prototyping a character you can use this tool. So here I can kind of change the mannequin a bit to make it something more in style with what I'm trying to do based off of a concept. Now the joint mover has different moving modes. Uh, the yellow controls that you see right now on the screen, those are the global movers. So if I grab a global mover, it will grab all the children below as well. Uh, what you're looking at right now, the pink controls are the mesh movers, which only affect the geometry and do not affect the joint placement at all. So they're just aesthetic movers. The blue movers that uh, were up there earlier are offset movers, which only affect that selected joint and nothing else. So just a few more tweaks here on the spine using our physique mode and then we can actually go ahead and save this workout to a physique template. We can also save out templates for our skeleton creation and for our joint mover which is what I'm doing here. Uh, that way you can load these in at any time and use them as a starting point for other characters or whatever you need. Now once we've kind of gotten our skeleton place or our mannequin prototype mesh made, we go ahead and we create a rig pose. Now the rig pose is essentially a T pose, but it's really just the animator friendly version of the pose. Like for the ponytail, for example, we may not want it to be curved in the rig pose, but maybe that's how it was modeled. So I line up the joints to the model, but then I can uh, actually straighten it in the rig. Here the uh, proxy mesh is automatically weighted for you. That was a pop-up that actually popped up a few moments ago. Uh, and then we go into deformation mode where you can polish up your skin weights and publish your character for the animation team. So we give our character a name, we put it in a specified project, and then we go ahead and hit build, which will go ahead and kick off the rig building process. Uh, in this case, she hasn't been created before, so we create a thumbnail for her. So we make a little thumbnail in the viewport, go ahead and hit build, builds the rig and then it tells you what files were created. You can browse to those files and you can check them out, um, drag them into your Perforce. Now for the animation toolkit, uh, here we're going to add a character. So this is, I'm an, anim an animator, I want to add the character for animation and uh, what you're seeing now are some of the UI modes. There's a picker, a custom outliner view, and then all the rig settings. Uh, I'm just going to cover some of the unique rig features like here is the auto hips, we also have the auto spine, so if you're an IK spine, the auto spine will uh, automate the position of the mid spine control. And then of course the auto clavs, which as you can see will automate the clavs based on the hand position. The custom ponytail that I added earlier, the custom chain module, has built in dynamics. All the chains do. So you can go ahead and uh, actually have baked in physics into your animations. Lots and lots of different settings on the rig. Not going to go into too much depth in the video. Of course, there's a standard stuff like IKFK matching, importing motion, both mocap and animation data, exporting your FBX to the Unreal Engine or animation data. Space switching is the tool that we um, that I created so that our animators could forego the use of constraints. Um, in this example, I created a cube, put the body control in the cube space. Now I can animate the cube to drive the body, but I still have full control over the body and this is, is available on all IK controls. Now I'll look at the pose editor. So I've created a little pose and I'm going to uh, 
save a thumbnail of this pose, give it a category, give it a name, and then on a clean scene I can load in the pose. I can load in mirrors of the pose. I can load in what I call the ghost pose, which is a mesh version of the pose. And I can move and rotate this in space and then wherever, whenever I'm done, I can hit snap and the rig will snap to its position. And then the last feature I kind of want to touch on is the ISO select. Uh, if you generate your ISO selection sets, you can then go in and start hiding elements of your mesh. Um, this is done based off the weighting of the verts to the bones. So this will work on any mesh. It doesn't have to be a segmented mesh like this. And uh, that's it. If you want to see more, just go to docs.unrealengine.com and look for the My Animation Rigging Tools. Thank you very much.